Good morning and welcome back to Moments for Moms today. We had a good meeting this morning. Um, we had some out again, of course, but we did have a great meeting and really shared a lot with each other. Um, if you're new here, my name is Stacy, and I am a mother of five. So I have children ranging from the age of six, eight, 18, 19, and 20, and I will have my first grandbaby anytime. So um, I'm glad you're here today and we're gonna get started. So if you have any prayer requests, please uh, leave them down below in the comments so that we can pray for you specifically, okay? Uh, let's get started. We went through uh, the devotion on the Bible app uh, called Six Characteristics of a Strong Family. So let's go into these characteristics and review this um, go through this Bible study, and let's see if you believe that your family is strong, or if you can do anything to strengthen your families. And I do have a sweet little cocky with me this morning, my little boy cocky. He's going to join me, right, baby? Yes. All right, so day one of six characteristics of a strong family said, we all make sacrifices, right? We all make sacrifices. Teachers sacrifice time for students. Mothers sacrifice themselves daily by laying aside their own desires for the sake of their children. Being a Christian is often a calling to sacrifice. We have to sacrifice things as Christians, right? Your family does not have to be the sacrifice. You do not have to sacrifice your family. The family is God's building block for society. So what makes a strong family? If you have something that you know that makes a strong family, leave it in the comments below, let us know. So studies showed astounding results when they did this study. And geographical and cultural differences really mattered very little. There are six characteristics of a strong family. So number one is strong families share a commitment. They make family a priority. They believe in the value of family and consider their own family to be a priority. They realize sacrifices must be made for the sake of family togetherness. So is family priority in your life? Does it show that your family is a priority? Do other commitments take priority over your family sometimes? And we discussed it that today in the class that sometimes other commitments do take priority. And we may find ourselves dragging our family along, right? Maybe it's something they didn't want to go do, but we drag them along because we make a commitment to go do something else. And we made that a priority. You may, um, you may need to evaluate and reprioritize your commitments for your family. Matthew 6, 21 says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Wow. So what is your treasure? What is your treasure in life? Because that's where your heart is, right? So day two said, Strong families have a strong commitment for one another. Strong families spend enjoyable time together. Hmm. So, enjoyable time. Are we enjoying our time together? Over 1,500 children were asked this question. What do you think makes a happy family? Do material objects? extravagant vacations because the answer when they ask these children that question those things didn't matter the kids didn't say material objects the kids didn't say extravagant vacations to Disney or Hawaii they didn't say that that wasn't their answer to what makes your family the majority of the children responded that a happy family is developed through active time, genuinely enjoying one another's presence. Do they really say it 
that way? Is that what came out of their mouth? Probably not. But that is what they expressed, was that actually spending time together and enjoying one another with genuine family time is what they really enjoyed. It wasn't the vacations. It wasn't the prizes you buy them. It was the time you spent. Some things to consider. Are you committed to spending time with your family? Do you make it a commitment to really spend time with your family? What does your time with your family look like? Does it look like you sitting on the couch watching a movie together? Does it consist of your kids in their rooms, you in the living room? Does it consist of your kids are outside and you're inside? Your time with your family, does it look like going on hikes? Does it look like going to Carowinds together? Does it look like going to the pumpkin patch together, okay? Um, I've been wanting to take my kids to the pumpkin patch the past two years to this specific pumpkin patch around here and I still have not got to it. Mm -hmm. Big fail. Um, so what does your family time look like with your family? Is it intentional time growing in knowledge and affection for one another or are you on your phone the whole time? Okay, are we just together or are we really spending time together? Does time with your family feel forced or is it non-existent? So think about those things. Do you feel like you're forcing your kids to go places or to do family time? Does your spouse feel forced to do family time? Or are you enjoying it? Or maybe family time is just non-existent. It doesn't even exist for your family. Do you find yourself distracted by your phones or other priorities when you are with your family? I mean, okay, I'm with y'all, but I've gotta go fold laundry. Or, oh, I've gotta go cook dinner. Yes, we have to cook dinner. But, can we spend family time cooking a meal together? Are we cleaning the house instead of spending time with our kids to be able to get out of spending time with our family? Think about it. And Hebrews 10, 24 says, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So now day three was strong communication. Yes, communication. Strong families practice good communication. Yeah, that one kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Society now consists of feelings going unvalidated. People would rather talk than listen. Research shows that strong families actually do the opposite. Strong families communicate with one another. They share common exchanges and they also encourage one another to express their feelings and their convictions, knowing they will be received with respect and understanding. Does your family feel heard or understood by you? Like, I'm stepping on my own toes, remember? I'm a mom, I'm human, I'm sinful, I am not perfect, and neither are my kids, okay? So, does your family feel heard or understood by you? Because I know my family, I have an eight-year-old that will say, you're never listening to me, you never hear me. But guess what? Sometimes it's because he's told me the same thing three or four times, and he's gonna ask the exact same question, and he's only asking it because I've already told him no. Okay, so, but then he says, I don't listen to you. But does your family feel heard when you're communicating? Are you showing them that you're listening and that you understand them? Or are you busy and not really listening? Have you been able to mutually encourage one another lately? Oh, encouragement is great. It really is. Take some time to talk with your family and communicate openly, because it will matter. 
Romans 1.11 says, For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift, so that you may be established, that is, that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. So then on day four, it was along with good communication. You should also take time to express your shared appreciation and affection with one another. Strong families are intentional, are intentional. Intentional, yeah. Why does it sound wrong for some reason right now? About encouraging and supporting one another. They are intentional about supporting one another. They are intentional about encouraging one another. We all love to feel appreciated, right? For who we are. And your family is no different. They want to feel appreciated as well. Have you told your family members how much they mean to you? Have you expressed how much you love them? If not, I urge you to go do it. Some families don't say, I love you, I love you. Some kids never hear that. Some kids never hear, I'm proud of you. Or you made a good choice. If you know your kids are making a good choice, let them know. Communicate how you feel. Give them praise. Have you pointed out the unique ways God had designed them that bring glory to his name? Have you looked at your little one and said, you know what? I love the way God is using you and you're letting God use you in the way that you're being kind to these people, this person. Maybe someone has special needs and you've noticed your child really spending time with that person. And, you know, you have to really praise your child. If you want to see more good behaviors, praise them, okay? So, if you see that your child opened the door for someone, I love how you did that. God showed you how to show, how to put others first, and that is such a godly thing to do. Tell them that you're proud of them. Tell them God is working in them. Let them know. Okay? Today is the day. Go do it. Go tell them. Don't wait till tomorrow because you don't know if you're going to have tomorrow. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another as you also are doing. Edification is super important because if you edify the good things instead of always harping on the bad things, what you edify, you'll see more of. If your kid is taking turns, edify them. Tell them how good they're doing, okay? If, uh, let's see, for example, your little one is sharing their toy. Praise them, edify them. I'm so proud of you for sharing. You are putting others first when you do that, just like in God's word, and that makes Jesus happy too. I'm so glad you're letting Jesus work in your life. If your husband mowed the grass, edify him. Honey, you did a great job mowing the grass today. Thank you for caring about our family and mowing the grass in such a great way. It looks awesome. Do you think he's going to do more of that? Yep. If your children clear the table, edify them. Thank you so much for clearing the table. That is such good manners. You're going to be such a wonderful husband or wife one day for taking care of your things. If they throw their clothes in the hamper, say, great job throwing your clothes in the hamper where they go. I'm so proud of you. Because if they get it in the hamper and you praise them, it's probably going to happen more often than laying in the floor beside the hamper. Praise the things you want to see. Edify them. Day five was, we have discovered strong commitment, spending time together, good communication, and affection for one another. Strong families have the ability to solve problems and react well in crisis also. The only perfect person was Jesus. We deal with imper imperfect people 
daily. We're all sinners. No one is perfect. And this can make conflicts arise. The difference in strong families and families that crumble is that strong families deal with the conflict well. Guess who they bring to the center of that conflict? The Lord. And they let him work through it. They don't try to work it out themselves. Because I've done that before. It doesn't work too well. They use win-win strategies to solve disagreements. They face crisis situations with good communication and a sense of security. They're always quick to be patient and readily forgive. Did you, did you hear that? They're always quick to be patient. Quick to be patient. And they readily forgive. Guys, if our kids do something today, Tomorrow when you wake up, you can't still hold it against them. You're going to have to forgive and start a fresh day. Don't carry over today's sins and burdens to tomorrow. Let that kid start fresh. Let them have a new day, just like we get each and every day. Start new. Don't carry over those bad things that happened yesterday. Conflicts can be challenging which makes stepping into a difficult situation or conversation with grace and love hard. It can make it really hard. But through Christ and the mercy he has shown us, we can confidently and patiently love our family well, even through pain and hurt. Guys, is there conflict or struggles in your family that you need to step into maybe a family member has hurt you maybe you've hurt someone else will you rely on God's love for you today and for the strength to love your family while in the midst of conflict are you gonna let God help you through those things Colossians 3 13 says bearing with one another and forgiving one another if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Wow, that one hit pretty hard. So day six was called shared spiritual life. Strong families experience faith both individually and as a unit. The family understands the importance of the spiritual well-being of each and every family member. They show this by love, compassion, accountability, and celebration. Have you spent time reading your Bible together, praying together, singing worship songs together lately? Have you done that lately? Take time to reread the characteristics of strong families and consider which one spoke to you the most. So where is God calling you to help make your family strong? Where do you feel? Do you feel like it? Leave it in the comments below. Ecclesiastes 4.9 says, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall... One will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. So, do you want to be alone or you want to be with someone, right? We need to support one another. Strong families stick together. Now, as you know, in other weeks, I have covered a part of the moments, um, not moments for moms, that's us, the uh, Don't Make Me Count to Three, um, study. So today we're going to focus on destruction with toys or property. Okay. So do your children destroy property or toys? You know, are they allowed to jump on the furniture in your home? Maybe not. Maybe so. Are they allowed to slam doors? Are they allowed to break their toys or break a sibling's toys? Do you have those type of issues? If so, then this is what you do. You're going to probe their heart first. And you're going to say, do you think you should be allowed to have this? If 
you are going to destroy it? Just get down on their level and say, do you really think you should be allowed to have this if you're going to destroy it? Are you being considerate of the person who purchased this for you? For you, Like, grandparents or mommy and daddy, we spent our money for this, for you. And are you being considerate of that? If you're going to destroy it and not take care of it? And is this an act of goodness or is it an act of evil? Are you being good or are you being bad by, you know, what you're doing because I don't think it's good. So you're gonna get on their level and really talk to them about that. Try to pull out their heart why they do that. Then you're gonna to talk to them about what destruction is. Wastefulness leads to poverty and a foolish man destroys what he has. Luke 15, 12 through 14 and Proverbs 21, 20. So tell them God's word says that if you're wasteful and you destroy things, you're not going to have more. God isn't going to keep providing these things for you if you're not going to take care of them, if you're just going to destroy them. Why would God do that? Right? Just like mommy and daddy. If, you know, if I don't take care of the car that I just bought and I let y'all hit it and get scratches on it and dents, then when I go to trade it, I'm not going to get my value out of it. So then I'm going to be out a lot of money because I'm going to have to put more money to buy another car. So I have to take care of what God gives me because everything God gives us is a gift and we have to take care of it, right? Show them that God's word says that and tell them, say, you are blessed and trusted with more when you take care of what you have. Matthew 25, 29, and 1 Corinthians 4, 2. So pull your Bible out and tell them, you know, you're really blessed. And God trusts you when he gives you these things. But you have to take care of them if you want to be trusted with more. If you want to be blessed with more. Okay? So talk to your kids. Get to their heart. Find out why they're being destructive with their toys. You know, did, did he... Did brother take sister's toy and destroy it because brother didn't want sister to be able to play with it if he couldn't play with it? Then you've got jealousy as well, right? So we really need to pull out their heart issues as to why they're acting this way. We don't want to just correct the outward behavior. We want to get to their heart and really pull out what's inside, okay? Not just what they're doing on the outside. So guys, I'm going to wrap that up here, and I hope you all have a great day. I hope you have a good week, and we'll start a new study for next week. Hope you'll all join us then. Bye.